The time has come for a brand new Pokemon TCG video and this time around we're focusing around Roaring Moon and Roaring Moon EX. This is one of the better decks in the format. It's a rogue deck if you will and it's actually a pretty good deck if you ask me. There might be a little bit of difficulties for new players who play this deck but I'm going to try my best to show you how this deck works. If you guys missed the last episodes we did go over Dragapult EX and Raging Bolt EX. They were super, super good videos. I recommend you go check those out. Leave a like on those videos if you've already watched them. Subscribe to the channel and there's going to be more Pokemon TCG videos coming your way. So subscribe and stay tuned for more. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start things off right away. We're going to play Roaring Moon. It's going to be kind of interesting because the, the couple of times that I have played this deck it's paid dividends but then there's also moments where you know this deck has difficulties and you'll see what I mean as far as this goes but make sure you leave a like check it out and we're gonna go from there I do got an update actually a little bit of a personal update finally getting used to my braces I can speak a little bit better at least is what it feels like. Do I want to go first? The answer is no. I want to go second. The reason behind that is because if I get a Professor Sada and I get a Greninja and everything else, we should be able to take something turn one, assuming my opponent is playing somewhat basic Pokemon. So, um, we got a Roaring Moon to start things off and a Greninja, so things are looking dandy to, to start things off. And better yet, my opponent has a Luminion V to start the board. We play Buddy Buddy Puffin. This is going to tell us what kind of deck they're running. Let's go ahead and take a look. And just looking at our hand, we got our boss's orders. We got a Professor Sada, Trekking Shoes, Nest Ball, and Ancient Booster Energy Capsule. So, hand is looking pretty okay, pretty decent. And my opponent is running a Charizard EX deck. So, it's going to be quite interesting. We all know that Charizard EX is a very bulky, bulky mon. So, Let's see how this treats us. What I'm thinking about doing turn one, we obviously play Trekking Shoes. Depending on what we get, we go from there. We play the Nest Ball to play another Roaring Moon. What I'm really hoping to do is get something going for um, energy-wise. So we'll see. They play the Cleffa, they cannot attack turn one. So maybe we get to take a Cleffa. I'm hoping we get to take it. Oh, look at this. That's beautiful. I'm actually going to play Trekking Shoes. Do I want the Nest Ball on hand? Not really. We get another Trekking Shoes, yay. Do I want an Artisan? Yes, that would be nice, but I'm really, really digging for an Energy. There it is. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to play Greninja's Concealed Card to discard one of them. And now we got two Nest Ball on hand. This is going to allow us to get another Roaring Moon going. And we're going to play another Nest Ball. This time we're going to get a, a Dunsparce, just in case we can draw up a Dunsparce later. And we obviously play Professor Sada's Vitality here. We attach the energy to our active Roaring Moon, draw the three. We got three energy cards, ladies and gentlemen. That is actually not the worst thing in the world. I'm going to play the energy card to our active Roaring Moon along with the Booster Energy Capsule. We're actually going to play both of them. We got, a, we got enough energies now to do some things here and there. And we're going to play the Vengeance Fletching. And take this Cleffa. We take the first prize card of the game. Hopefully it's not our last. We got another Dunsparce. I could have taken a moment to really search my deck with the Nest Ball. Missed opportunity for us, but it is what it is. So my opponent brings in the Bidoof. And we might be able to take a Bidoof next turn too. We can take their Charmander. We can even take their Pidgey. It might be best to take their Pidgey to be honest with boss's orders. And they got nothing. We might take their Bidoof. Might be best to take their boot, their bit of, to be honest. So we're gonna play the concealed cards. We're gonna get more energy cards in the discard pile. We only got one. Play Explorer's Guidance on this turn. So we're gonna add two cards in our hand. Ooh, Dark Patch is pretty nice. Not gonna lie. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll play the Dark Patch now so that we can put it on this Roaring Moon here. And we're going to play an energy on the Roaring Moon that's in our bench. So each of our Roaring Moon have one energy with the exception of our active one. And that is pretty dang sweet. We just took a Bidoof. Next turn I'm going to take the Pidgey. 
unless they evolve their chat their Charmander, so we'll see. We just got an energy card from our prize pool, which is not the worst thing in the world. Roaring Moon X might be good later on when they got their Charizard on board, but I really want to take the Pidgey next because if they get a rare candy and if they evolve into Pidgeot, they can literally do whatever they want. I do not want that to happen. So it really just depends on what they play next. Maybe they can seed right away. To explain Roaring Moon for those new users, Vengeance Fletching is a really good attack. Basically does 70 damage base plus 10 damage for each ancient card you discard or each ancient card in your discard pile. So damage can pile up pretty quick with the right cards and that is why we're running Explorer's Guidance to kind of accelerate those ancient cards a little bit. So they do play the Charmander. I'm okay with taking that too, to be completely honest. You give me the Charmander, I'm gonna take it. I think we got this one in the bag. Not the best start for my opponent. And maybe they're just idling now. See what happens. Yeah, they're just gonna idle, probably call it a game. I hope at least. That would be pretty nice, not even gonna lie. So they do nothing. I j this is an idle game, I got a feeling. We're just gonna keep playing just like normal. Concealed cards. We already got Professor Asada's Vitality, which we're gonna go ahead and play now. And now all of our Roaring Moons are powered up. Like we got a Dundon Sparse, we're gonna play it, might as well. Runaway Draw is gonna allow us to get three more cards. There you go. We'll play the Earthen Vessel, discard the Earthen Vessel we have now. We obviously got none, but I really want to start accelerating everything we got here. Play the other Roaring Moon just in case, along with the energy card. Look at this, we get another um, Ancient Booster Energy. And that's it, we're just gonna go ahead and take the Charmander. We already have 140 total damage. And we got another prize card going for us, so pretty sweet if you ask me. And we got an Artisan, we don't need it anymore. Maybe we play Explorer's Guidance and get a couple things in our discard pile afterwards. We'll figure it out. We'll figure things out. No problem. All of our Roaring Moons are gonna be cherry. My opponent's idling. You can skip it to the next game if you want. But we're just gonna continue it up. Yeah, my opponent timed out. Okay. Game two is in play and we got nothing, nothing at all. We have one mulligan, I forgot what card this was. It's blank because this game is buggy. And we got a Roaring Moon. We got a Roaring Moon, we got a Dun Sparse in our hands. Not the worst hand in the world, but it, it could be worse. Or I should say not the best hand in the world. So we go first, double Ancient Box. We play Trekking Shoes. Do I want to put this in my hand? I can go without it, to be honest. Oh, I meant to put no. That's definitely my own fault. We literally have no choice now, except to play our energy card and our ancient booster capsule. Because I don't want my opponent to set up with Ogre Pond and knock us out right away. So I think what we do on this next turn we play Explorer's Guidance for obvious reasons. And we'll see what we get from there. This isn't the greatest hand, so we gotta work with what we got. My opponent is probably gonna accelerate a lot quicker than we are. But they already have the Greninja and they use its ability to draw their two. Okay. They attach an energy to Raging Bolt. Call a turn, please. No, Bravery. Bravery Charm. 
I'm gonna make this make this thing bulkier than what it already is. And there's a squat ability, they're gonna use it. No doubt they're gonna use it. Three Poke Gear. That's not a good hand either. I mean, they drew the Squat Billy, so that kind of offsets the hand a little bit. And they play the Ogre Pawn EX. No Grass Energy, please. Ah, uh, they're gonna get the Grass Energy. It's like we got the worst hand in the world. Technically, my opponent did, but they offset it with Squat Billy. Don't play another Ogre Pawn, please. I'm gonna play Teal Dance. They're gonna attach an energy to draw one. And we're already in really big trouble, to be 100% honest. Like, they play the Ultra Ball, they're probably gonna play another Ogre Pond. Golly. I don't like this one bit. They're gonna use Till Dance again. I don't think we got the cards to Oko this Raging Bolt. Look at this! Yeah, that they just Oko'd us. Bellowing Thunder. Closes it out. What a hand. Yeah, let's see what we got today. We got Roaring Moon EX, we got two of them on hand. And my opponent mulligans, they get one mulligan. This looks to be a Charizard deck or something like that. Not the worst hand in the world, this is actually not too bad. We got an Artisan, oh it's a Dreepy. Okay. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. The good news is that we got Explorer's Guidance, which will allow us to get a couple cards here and there. But let's see what we got. Okay, we got things going here. We're gonna play the Trekking Shoes to start things off. I can go without the booster. Got the Earthen Vessel here. Okay. Let's go ahead and play the Artisan. The Scrap the cards in our deck. I'm gonna play another Roaring Moon just in case. Play a Nest Ball here. We're definitely gonna play Radiant Greninja. And we play another Nest Ball because I wanna get another... Wait, I wanna get a Dud Sparse just in case. Okay, what do we do next, you ask? We gotta play the Concealed cards. Have to. There you go. We play the Earthen Vessel, get rid of the Artisan since we have one in play here. And we got three Artisan in the deck, too. So we're doing somewhat okay. In theory, I want to discard these. Um, we only get to add two of them. Got in Sparse and Trekking Shoes, why not? I'm okay with discarding the rest. We play Trekking Shoes. Um, I do want to add this just in case you never really know. And Professor Sada's Vitality should allow us to hit the Roaring Moon next. And get rid of this Artisan. Cool. We're not in the worst shape in the world. I just wish that we uh, got charged, off, uh, charged up right away. They play the Artisan, probably gonna get a Dreepy. If they're running a deck like mine, probably not to. They get the Dreepy. There's the Arvin, probably gonna get a rare candy. And that's gonna be okay with me, to be honest. They can knock out my Dodon Spar, sure. But I'm actually gonna play Calamity Storm. Or not Calamity Storm, I apologize. Uh, the Friends Eye to or whatever. And I wanna take the Dragapult turn one, best believe. Assuming... The EXP share is actually not a bad card to run in this deck. Hyper Aroma is actually not bad. I've thought about running Hyper Aroma on my deck, not even gonna lie. You take my Dud and Sparse, that's perfectly fine. I'm taking two with, uh, you know, Dragapult.
Yikes. Okay. I'm gonna sacrifice my Roaring Moony X here, not even gonna lie. I'm totally okay with sacrificing Roaring Moon. Then we go into Devil Sparks or something in case they want to try something else. Okay. We're gonna stick to the plan here. We got two, right? Yep, we got two energy. Nope, wrong card. It's a good thing I'm paying attention, do you see that? Almost messed it up for us. We're gonna play Radiant Greninja because we got the Dark Patch on, on our hand here. There you go, we're gonna play the Dark Patch right now. We're gonna play Roaring Moon for later too. Attach the basic energy to the Roaring Moon that's on board here. And um, we're gonna play the Artisan. I'll take the Roaring Moon. And TBH. We just hit the Frenzied Gorging here. And we're gonna take the Dragapult. We don't want this to cause any more damage than what it already has. They're gonna take... They can technically three take three uh, prize cards next turn anyways. So we're gonna try to limit that right now. My opponent's gonna select their prize cards first. So they take two. And I'm gonna take two. Now we're not in the worst shape in the world. So we'll take it. I'm gonna put Darden Sparse in play. Simply because it has a free retreat cost. I don't think they'll be able to knock me out. But there's a Lance, they're gonna get what? Dragapult? Yep. I wish I was running Iono in this deck, not even gonna lie. Like, they got the Dracloak on play now. The good news is that because of the attack we used, they didn't get to activate EXP share. That's cool by me. That's cool by me. I'm gonna play the Roaring Moon next. We're in really good shape, not even gonna lie. You play your Artisan, buddy. Whoa, what is this? A Ditto? That's actually not bad to run on this deck. That's pretty cool. Earthen Vessel, probably gonna get some other cards. Sometimes I wish I ran Iono on this deck, not even gonna lie. They're gonna play the Switch? That's fine, I got the boss's orders, I'll take that. We're gonna play boss's orders as a matter of fact. We're gonna take this. Ooh, Professor Sada's Vitality. We don't need it, to be honest. Play Dark Patch, we're gonna put it on Roaring Moon EX, just in case you wanna bring another Dragapult, buddy. I'm all for it. We're gonna play the Trekking Shoes. We gotta play the Trekking Shoes. I'm cool with the Dark Patch. Okay, we're gonna play Boss's Orders. Give me your Dracolope, buddy. There you go. All cool with it. I wanna play the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule on Roaring Moon. We play the Artisan for another Roaring Moon. We're looking in really good shape, not even gonna lie. In theory, what I can do to slow him down too, I can bring in the, you know, Raging Moon here. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I don't wanna give them the opportunity to, you know, take their three prize cards right off the bat. However, I'm gonna play Dark Patch into one of my Bench Roaring Moon, just in case. And we're gonna play the Vengeance Fletching here. So now we're tied. They might, and I stress the word might, they might get the advantage on this next turn, depending on what goes on here. So they bring in the Ditto. Please don't have... Okay, they don't have... Um, what's that card called? They don't have uh, Rare Candy. But Dracloak poses to be a problem, to be honest. Fire Energy, 2 Ditto, interesting. Turbo Energize, that makes sense. Capturing Aroma, give me a heads. Thank you. We don't need any more Dreepy on board. Though technically they can get a Dreepy with our design. Okay. 
I feel okay, to be honest. I really want to play Radiant Greninja in case I can snag another boss's orders and take that Dracloak. Come on, give us the boss's orders. That would be pretty dirty, not gonna lie. Roxanne is pretty nice. I might just play her. Concealed cards, we don't get much, to be honest. But I am gonna play... Uh, it doesn't really matter, though. I'm gonna play Roxanne. I don't want you to have any Dragapult on hand. Look at this. Now we eliminate the possibility of them hitting us for an OTK. Well, it's not really an OTK, but you know what I'm trying to say. Penny's nice. Penny is actually really nice. I don't want Explorer's Guidance, considering we have two of them on hand. We actually play Earthen Vessel. Get rid of one of them. There you go. This is a beauty of a hand, not even gonna lie. What a beautiful hand. Vengeance, Fle Vengeance Fletchling is gonna... Not Fletchling, not... Fletching, right? Fletching? Or is it something else? Yeah, Fletching. They probably got a Dragapult on hand. It makes no sense you bring that in. Recon Directive. They got a Dragapult, I know it. Out of all the cards on their deck, they got a Dragapult. Unless they concede here. They got no more Dreepy. Concede. There you go. Wow. Mulligan. The last time we mulligan, we had the worst hand in the history of the TCG. Let's see what my opponent does. They're gonna know just based off of Explorer's Guidance. Two mulligan? Three mulligan! Oh my goodness. That is ugly. That is worst case scenario. Take your three cards. You want to take all of them. Shin Pao. Maybe Blasters, I don't know. I'm not too happy with this hand, not even gonna lie. This is the worst hand we could have ever gotten. <laughs> I hope my opponent, nah, too, too much to ask for, for them to have a bad hand with eight cards in their hand. That's insane. Okay, they get a Pidgey, a Bidoof, and two Figgybacks. They play the Nest Ball, probably gonna get the Chimp out now. Radiant Greninja. Interesting. Play the Chimp out. Why do you have two Figgybacks? Especially with all these cards here. An Electric Energy? This is some kind of roaring uh, or raging bolt variant. Why would you? Oh, I see. I know what you got. I know what you got. You have that electric energy for the iron hands. That's what it is. Play the earthen vessel. We're going to get rid of the energy card so that we can get our two energies. Obviously, we play Professor Sada's Vitality here. Draw the three. We really need the momentum, so it doesn't hurt to have it. Artisan's going to help us out. Doesn't have a rule box, so we're gonna get a dud and sparse just in case this one gets KO'd. And we go ahead and power up our Raging Moon, Roaring Moon. Now I'm getting the names confused. And call it a turn. The reason we're playing Roaring Moon here is because Roaring Moon, if I'm not mistaken, yep, should be able to Oko this uh, Chin Pao here with 220. As long as we're able to discard Artisan. So let's see. My opponent plays an Irida. They're probably gonna get the Rare Candy and the gosh darn Excalibur. And they're gonna wreck me. 
They're gonna wreck this deck, I already know. It'd be a miracle if we pull it off, but I cannot count myself out. And just like we predicted, they got the Baxcalibur with the rare candy. They're probably gonna play Baxcalibur to their bench Friggybacks. I'm a genie. And I don't know what else they do, to be honest. Ultra Ball. If I were my opponent, I'd probably just attach an energy to Figgy Backs to retreat and bring in the Chin Pal. With the Ultra Ball, they grab the Bibarel and they're gonna play it. They're gonna be able to draw what? Two? Okay. Not bad. Play the trekking shoes. Yes, I'll put the trekking shoes on my hands. Ah, do I want the dark patch? It doesn't hurt to have it, but I don't think we need it. Get an ultra ball here. Okay. It's actually not too bad. I'm gonna play the ultra ball, discard artisan, and the basic energy to get a dud sparse. Because we're gonna play runaway draw. We're gonna draw our three, play the Dud and Sparse on our bench, evolve it to, uh, well, Dud and Sparse. We're gonna play Artisan, play Roaring Moon. There you go, now we're cooking. Runaway draw is gonna help us out. What do we do? I can't remember if I attached an energy. I have not, okay. We can Professor Sada here. Yeah, we can totally Professor Sada. So we move Raging Moon. We play the Dark Patch, because we're gonna discard. Or actually, we're gonna play... Oh, I played the wrong card, actually. That's fine. Because we can still Earthen Vessel here. Discard our Dark Patch. Or, sorry, our, um, you know, Energy. And I really want to target that Chien Pao, not even going to lie. So we're going to hit up Professor Sada's Vitality. So we can attach this to, you know, Raging Moon. Roaring Moon. Seven, eight, nine, ten. One, t one ten. I'm really trying to think to see what I can do here. Play the Earthen Vessel, we're gonna get our two energy again. But I think we use our A spec. We use Prime Catcher so that we can target this Chin Pao. Bring in our Roaring Moon here. And I think we're Cherry. We're definitely Cherry. Okay, hit up the Calamity Storm. We're gonna get rid of the Artisan. And it's a W! Okay, double mulligan to start things off. We're going second. We won the coin toss. I don't want to go first. Got one mulligan. That's cool. Lugia V-Star deck. That's actually the deck we're featuring next. Well, spoiler alert. Okay. Got a Roaring Moon to start things off. And I have an idea of what I want to do. Because we're going second, I can power up right away. Let's just see what they got. Ursa Luna EX. Heavy retreat cost. So we might be able to take a prize card here. Not right away, obviously, but within the next, I want to say, two to three turns. Aiming for two. Here comes the Lugia V. Here comes to capturing Aroma. They get the tails, thank goodness, because I don't want them to get any Archelops. I don't want them to get any Lugia V-Star. Though Mencino and Cincino are big problems. Call turn. You ain't got nothing. I know for a fact you ain't got nothing. Double turbo energy to the Lugia V. Okay. 
Artisan's gonna help us. Let's play it. I'm gonna get a Roaring Moon here. Okay. In our prize pool. We got a Explorer's Guidance in the prize pool. We got an Ultra Ball. A Dark Patch. An Earthen Vessel. And Booster Energy Capsule. Cool. We know what we got now. Play the Earthen Vessel. Get rid of this energy. And grab two energy here. I want to accelerate a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and play Professor Sada's Vitality on a Roaring Moon. Look at what we got here. It's actually pretty good. Trekking Shoes? I want the Greninja. We need the Greninja. we we'll play the Greninja now and use Concealed Cards. There you go. Now we're cooking. Okay. 90 is not going to be enough to take, you know, Ursaluna turn 1. But let's see. Ursaluna's got 170 more damage, which tells me we need 10 ancient cards in our discard pile. It's kind of a big feat, if you ask me. Here comes Jack, probably gonna get a Lugia V Star, where my guess. Oh, Archelops, okay. Smart, very smart. Ultra Ball gonna discard both Archelops. Gonna get a Lugia V Star, and there's your engine. They got set up quick! Super quick. Jet energy to bring in the Lugia, and they're gonna go ahead and knock out a Roaring Moon. Roaring Moon, it was nice knowing you. Oh man. The only problem with this deck is that if you don't have enough ancient cards in your discard pile, this deck really suffers. It suffers a lot, as a matter of fact. Okay. Play the Artisan. Explorer's Guidance is kind of important right now. Professor Sod is important. And I feel at this point that the Nest Ball is too. So we're going to play the Nest Ball and we're going to grab our Roaring Moon. No. Roaring Moon EX. I feel like I need to. And we're going to grab our Artisan. And we're going to play Flooring Moon. Okay. I feel like I can't Radiant Greninja, considering I need this energy card. One forty is pretty sweet, though. Not enough to do much. I'm gonna play the Dark Patch to this Roaring Moon here. This one's gonna go down, obviously. And we play this Roaring Moon next to get rid of the Lugia. That's what we're doing. We got Professor Sada's Vitality for later, which is pretty nice. That's gonna allow us to set up next. Primal Turbo is a big problem, though. Is that their last energy? I'm kind of shocked. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of shocked. Take your one, that's fine. Here comes Roaring Moon. We're gonna play Professor Sada's Vitality. Give me the three. We'll play Dud and Spires. So 
to be honest, we play the Vengeance Fletching here. And the Lugia's mine. They do drop to seven. And we take our two prize cards. It's an even playing field now. Obviously, Ancient Booster Energy Capsule is going to have to go to Roaring Moon EX. There's no reason as to why it should go to Roaring Moon, because if my opponent got another Lugia, then we're in big trouble. Boss's Orders is going to come out. Oh, you're taking my Roaring Moon for two. That's a bummer. I can take the Mencino, that's for sure. Then I can take the Ursa Luna the turn after, if I'm not mistaken. Seven, eight, nine... 10, 11, 12. Oh, Ursa Luna's coming out. And you're hitting my pri- Oh, you're gonna knock me out. I'm in trouble. I'm in big trouble. My strategy just went out of the window. I'm gonna bring in the Dudden Sparse. I feel like we got to. Eighty, ninety, one hundred. There's one ten, one twenty, one thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy. We got enough to knock out the Cersei Luna. But I am one hundred percent. Afraid of a boss's orders. One hundred percent afraid of a boss's orders. I feel like I have no choice but to play Professor Sada's Vitality, and we're only going to attach one to our Roaring Moon. Why not play another Roaring Moon, just in case? Okay, the field is somewhat set. I'm just afraid of the, uh... We can win on the turn after, assuming they don't have a boss's orders. If they got a boss's orders, it's definitely a double G. I'm hoping to take Luminian V next turn. I got a boss's order of my own, and worst case scenario, I got counter catcher. Do you know what you signed yourself up for, boy? Please give me a heads or tails. I jinxed myself. I swear I wanted a tails. They're gonna attach an energy. You got another Luminion V. What are you gonna do with that? What are you- Boss's orders! I totally did this to myself. I told- I just jinxed the living you-know-what out of myself. Please only have one. Nope. I just got slapped by a Tintino. We didn't even have a booster energy to offset that. That's... Not bad. I got set up way too slow on that previous match, but you could see what this deck could do. Now, there's a lot of room for improvement with this deck. But it's a really fun deck to play. It's not the easiest deck to play, but it's super fun. It's not also very consistent. You guys got most of the deck list. We're running three Dudun Sparse and three Dun Spars. We're running two Roaring Moon EX. The reason I'm running two Roaring Moon specifically is for those decks that have, you know, Charizard EX, those decks that are Dragapult related, you know, those very bulky decks is why we're running Roaring Moon. The Friends Eyes Gorging and Calamity Store are pretty nice to have, though the energy costs are kind of hefty as opposed to having two on Roaring Moon. We have four Roaring Moon, which is the main attacker of this deck. It's super easy, as you saw, to get set up with this card, as long as you have the right cards. And finally, our other engine is Radiant Greninja, in addition to our Dudden Sparse. Pretty good card to have, and a very important card to have, considering that this deck 
runs off of Professor Sada's vitality, and then Dark Patch. We're running four of each, so we want the energy consistency within our discard pile as much as possible. We're running one penny specifically for this bad boy right here. Never know when you need Penny, so Penny comes in clutch often. <coughs> I actually thought we were running three Ultra Ball, we're running two. And it makes sense as to why we're running two, because we only have two Roaring Moon EX. Though technically, we can bring it out with the Nest Ball. I also have it for the Dozen Sparse. We got three Artisan, you can technically get rid of one of them and grab the Pokestop if you wanted to do that. We got four Explorer's Guidance. This simply allows you to accelerate the ancient cards in your discard pile. Same thing with Trekking Shoes. Not only does this allow you to kind of accelerate the ancient cards in your discard pile, it lets you dig for the cards that you need um, as long as they're t on the top of your deck and kind of pick and choose in a way. We got one Boss's Orders. I thought we were running two. I build so much decks, I, forgot what I'm, I forget what I'm running sometimes, but you can run more than one boss's orders. There's a lot of things you can do. I got a Roxanne. I absolutely love this card. It comes in clutch. It came in clutch on that one game against Chin Pao, and my opponent surrendered ultimately. We got one Super Rod, and we got four Nest Ball, four Booster and Booster, Ancient Booster Energy. This card is such a long name. I can't remember the last time we've seen such a long name on such a Pokemon card. And our A spec card of the deck is Prime Catcher. Try this deck out. Let me know what you think. Leave a like. Comment your own comment your own deck version of Roaring Moon and see what works best. This is kind of a template that you could use and play around with it. I believe that this deck was one of the decks that won regionals or something like that. I don't remember. Not this deck, obviously. But still, check it out. It's your boy Daddy Mac. Leave a like. Subscribe for more. And we'll see you guys next time.